Thank you to the Welsh North American Business Chamber. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. You get two Yanks tonight for the price of one. We've both been here a long time, and I don't know about Henry, but uh, I feel like the guy in the old joke who's falling from a building and just keeps on falling and repeating to himself as he falls, so far so good, so far so good. My wife and I have been here as guests in your wonderful country for about six years now. Uh, consultants, entrepreneurs, journalists both. And we've noticed this nation's spirits tend to rise and fall with the national rugby side. <laughs> but the consensus seems to be so far that even though it was tough to lose, we're as happy as we can be for Ireland and very glad that it wasn't England. <laughs> now, since I don't understand this game that is sort of the national pastime of sport, I wanted to sort of look at it from a different perspective. I've, there aren't too many sports where the real fighting begins after the whistle blows. So I really wanted to understand and put some perspective from a journalist's point of view. So I went to the Google machine and I pulled up some population numbers and I saw France has 61 and a half million people in the country. We also have Italy with 58.1. England has 52. Scotland has 5 million. Ireland is 4.1. And Wales is 2.9 million. And I don't know about you, but any time a nation that size can compete against competitors a third to 20% or 20 times uh, larger, that's quite an accomplishment to be proud of and to be cheered. Yay. Now, that said, I'm a bit frustrated with the Republic of Ireland, but not for the same reason perhaps as you are. Because unrelated to rugby, they've grown to become the world's 13th largest exporter in the 11 years since I've moved to the EU. Indeed, the American Chamber of Commerce in Ireland says that there are 590 US companies employing some 100,000 people, sending 60 billion euros worth of exports into the world markets, paying two and a half billion euros worth of taxes. US firms have invested 21 billion euros in Ireland with the resulting 12 and a half billion in the economy, and the USA is their top export destination. Dell Computers has a million square feet, although some of that is likely to shrink with some of the facilities moving to Poland. And they're there at Shannon, a real, true international air and duty-free port. And Ireland has experienced 28% manufacturing growth over the last 15 years. And to make matters worse, the US network NBC's Morning Today show broadcast was there live this past week celebrating some guy who drove snakes out into the sea. And that had me boiling because they had music, dancers, and sheep for two days on the telly. Now, I live on a farm in Monk Nash, and our sheep are just as good. <laughs> Only men allowed would wow a US audience, I'm sure, on television. The Glamorgan Heritage Coast every day takes my breath away. And not to mention the Brecon Beacons, Cardiff Bay, the Mumbles, all of the things that this country has to offer. Yet, the headlines don't seem to change. Wales at work this past week bemoaned the loss of Hoover. And if Ford becomes fail, then Bridge End is as screwed as Merthyr. So what are we to do? As I said yesterday on The Politics Show, we really need active government focused on attracting and growing business, and with an opposition bringing real programs rather than the weekly theater of prime minister's questions. The USA just ended a grueling two-year election cycle. That's a long time. But now they are focused full bore on fixing the economic crisis. In this country, we're just beginning the election cycle. And we may not have a resolution until May of next year. And I don't think we can wait that long. And sitting on one's hands is not an option. To me, Wales is a classic underdog. Everyone loves to root for an underdog to overthrow a powerhouse. And I've been told that the correct answer to who are you rooting for is Wales and whomever England is playing. And I get that because I lived on the border with Germany and Netherlands with my wife. Believe me, there's an even bigger rivalry between those two countries. And rivalry is healthy. In my birth country this past weekend, we saw tiny, tiny schools, Cleveland State, Dayton, Western Kentucky, upset traditional basketball powerhouse schools, Wake Forest, West Virginia, and Illinois to wear this year's Cinderella slipper for a time at the ball, the NCAA basketball tournament, where in three weekends we go from 65 teams down to one national championship. 
it's great sports theater. So I've been glued to the internet and to the television all weekend long. And that's just one of the many bits of useless information about America that if you ever want to, I can tell you. And I can assure you that I'm probably, a, it's as confounding to you as most of rugby is to me. But that's my job, trying to take things American and help them make sense in Wales, and take things Welsh and help them make sense abroad, without hopefully angering both countries simultaneously. And if I make it through the day where no one is mad at me, including my wife, it's been a good one. But my point is, is that underdogs can come back in any endeavor. And if, for example, you told me that a skinny black kid born in Hawaii, raised in Indonesia and Kansas by a single white mother and her parents, living for a time on social payments, could go on to attend two prestigious Ivy League universities, become editor of the law review at Harvard, throw away a six to seven figure corporate law career to become a community organizer, helping families who've been laid off in the mining and auto industries, would then run for and win a seat in the Illinois Senate, and then in 2002 run for and win one of only two US Senate seats in all of Illinois. And then two years after that, take on the de and defeat the dual political dynasties of the Clintons and the McCains to now reside at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, also known as the White House. You could have gotten a thousand to one odds at William Hill on that one. In 2006, in February, people were saying, Barack who? So there we have it. The world's first Muslim, non-American born socialist madrasa school terrorist fin pumping funded by Hugo Chavez and the Ku Klux Klan, complete with his Pentagon bombing pals led by a crazy pastor, non-flag pin wearing, sworn in on the Koran, middle named Hussein, ooh, <laughs> President of the United States, Barack H. Obama. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the entire campaign in five sentences. 63 days ago, he donned his red cape and suit with an S on the middle of it. And everyone is now wondering why he has not yet saved the world. It's a show of great respect and fear when the opposition party comes out early calling you names. The US Tories, also known as the Republican Party, have spun themselves into a fit after losing control of Congress and the White House. And the Democrats, I don't know whether we call them New Labor now, are gradually moving away from a state of, please don't hurt me, to the slow realization that they now control 60% of the seats in both houses of Congress and can really move an agenda through, while the Republicans routinely hold a gun to their own head and threaten to pull the trigger. Now, the G20 nations are very worried about the pace of this plan and the cost. Why should we pay for a US-created program with more debt? But capital markets in the US are growing as is shaky general investor confidence. Now, if someone could just handle those pesky AIG bonuses, we'd all be in much better shape. In this environment, why is WNABC or the Welsh North American Business Chamber so important? Because government alone cannot and will not develop business. Only a public-private partnership out in the sunshine, completely transparent, and with everyone focused on Wales instead of their own Witham, that's what's in it for me, can succeed. Now, I feel passionate about living in this country over the last six years. I came here at the end of 2003 as the COO of a global seminar organization, and I reached out to the then doomed WDA. I saw their adverts on BA flights, and I thought, yes, this country could be the same as Ireland. And I hope you agree that government cannot lead on economic development. Business people must take the lead to create jobs and prosperity. The WDA was led by business people who were accountable. And that time has passed. Officers of government cannot use what the Dutch called gabakken looked, that is, make empty statements filled with platitudinous baked air. Businesses are in real pain. And it hurts. It hurts brand whales if there's not an air of reality. Now, the WNABC has a role to play, but it's you and I, every one of us here, that has to bring this to the attention of government and push matters forward as if it was in business.